I know. Credit cards can be a bit of a taboo topic, but if you know what to do with them, they don't have to be. So first things first, if you're gonna use a credit card, be sure you're only charging what you can afford to pay off before interest begins to accrue. We wanna make sure that that's number one. Once we've got that covered, I think it's important that you look into credit cards that can offer you some benefits as well. Some of those benefits could be cash back. There are cards that offer you cash back on gas purchases, grocery purchases. I mean, there's some of everything out there. Another way is accruing points. A lot of credit card companies offer rewards programs and you can accrue points based on your spending. Those points can be cashed in for a host of things, whether it's gift cards or you can use them for flights or vacations, hotels and things like that. So again, it helps make it a little more worthwhile that you are charging and you're not just helping the credit card company make money and be in business, but you're also getting a little something out of it too. So again, if you're gonna use a credit card, it doesn't have to be a bad thing, but let's make sure that we're doing the right thing with those credit cards. Hello, Mount family. We're here to introduce the next segment of our Financial Literacy Seminar Series. I'm Jason Atkins from AW Financial Partners. Planning for retirement is not merely a task, it's a journey towards securing your financial future. In this presentation, we delve into the intricacies of crafting a robust retirement strategy. Hello, my name is Janella Williams. We start with the cornerstone of any retirement plan, assets, growth, access, and predictable income. These elements form the bedrock upon your future stability rests. But it's not just about accumulating assets. Income alignment is key. The four box strategy ensures your income streams are diversified, balanced, and resilient. Envisioning your retirement is paramount. What does your ideal future look like? It's more than just numbers. It's about the life you want to live. Estimating your budget is the practical step that brings your vision into focus. It's about understanding your needs and aligning them with your financial resources. Building your nest egg takes time, discipline, and sound financial decisions. Every contribution adds another layer of security for your future. But the road to retirement isn't without its hazards. Longevity, inflation, market volatility, healthcare costs, and excessive withdrawals, these are the risks and pitfalls we must be prepared for. By the end of this presentation, you'll not only understand the terrain, but you'll have the confidence to embark on your own retirement planning journey. Because at the end of the day, at AW Financial Partners, your financial well-being is our top priority. Join us via Zoom on April 16th at 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you there. It was time, fellas. You get to a certain age, you gotta upgrade your emergency contact. My mama go to bed too early. <laughs> My mama lay down, the sun's still out. Like, Mama, why are you going to bed? You boy, you better call me tomorrow. Bye. You better pray about it. Get off my phone. Bye. Where my single people at? Single, single, make some noise. Quick, 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 quick. Yes. Just loud and lonely. That's what's going on, y'all. Just loud and yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Because I put a shirt on and got a warning, right? Listen, and you can get these outside and say, I lay hands both ways. <laughs> My name is Tanai Oates. I'm 20 years old. Um, I'm from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I'm a student at Full Sail University. My name is Jamila Ali. I'm from Virginia Beach, Virginia. I'm 22 years old, and I go to the illustrious Spelman College. My name is Olivia Williams. I go to George Mason University. Um, I'm from Chesapeake, Virginia, and I am 21 years old. Well, I can apply this internship to what I want to do in the future because I feel like I met a lot of people and a lot of creators, and we can all help each other out. Um, what I learned as well is just like, you know, different editing techniques, um, stuff with the camera that I didn't know before. I just thought that was pretty cool because I 
have a whole camera at home and I just never used it in that way. So <laughs> I was like, dang, I can do that. Originally, I didn't know what I wanted to do, um, but I had I went through like directing, producing, editing, um, script writing, and I landed on cinematography. Actually, I think because um, working with a church before as a volunteer, I did some camera work with Sam, so that was kind of cool. Before coming into this internship, I had a hard time like collaborating with people, um, and being here like has shown me like you're not going like always agree with people, but you gotta respect like what other people are saying. So I feel like that's a weakness, like being able to collaborate. Um, but I feel like it's turning into a strength, like since I've been here at the internship. Man, God is still opening doors. He is still doing the miraculous. He's still doing things that I have not seen and ear has not heard. Man, we want to hear your testimonies. We want to hear the excellence of what God has been doing to usher you into this season of continued open doors. Man, Pastor, along with Dr. Keisha, want you to send your testimonies to testimony 
at themountleads.org. We want to hear about it. We know he's opening doors for you. Doors that no man can shut. Testimony at themountleads.org. We want to hear from you. God's blessing you, and we believe it. At the Mount, we have what we call direction coaches. And what they are, are exactly what their name says. They direct you in the fellowship and help coach you along the way. So if you ever see this badge and you have a question about anything, just ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Or me. Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Yeah. <laughs> ask me. So if you ever have a question and you see this badge, just ask me. What's up and welcome to the Mount, where we believe that church is supposed to change lives. And here, we change lives by caring, connecting, and covering. Good morning, why don't you stand to your feet all over the sanctuary? We wanna say good morning to you, good morning to all of you who may be watching wherever you are all over the country. We so appreciate you. Are y'all glad to be in the service one more time? Anybody glad to be in the service? Glad to be in the house? Come on, make some noise for Jesus. He's worthy of glory, praise, and honor. Father, we thank you right now for who you are and for what you've done. 
We serve a mighty God, a big God, and we thank you for giving us life, health, strength on today. We can absolutely positively do nothing without you. So we thank you, God. We ask that you come and arrest this place on this morning, God. Give us what we need right now in the name of Jesus to take us not only through the day, but through the week and through the month and the year and years to come, God. We will give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise because you are the only God. In Jesus' name, if you're loving, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. Hallelujah. Yes. The song simply says, bless the Lord of my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Praise the Lord. So we come to give him praise, give him glory, give him honor on this morning. And we want to encourage all of you and you even watching. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord.
to praise him. We got to dance. We got to speak it. We got to believe it. Yeah. We got to do all those things yes, at the same time. Because he's forever moving. Yes, he's forever blessing. Yes, he's forever keeping. Yes, oh, we got a God who is a problem solver. Anybody know? We got a problem solving God. So you might be like me. There might be something that you have and you're waiting on God to do. But the thing is, you got to step your situation into your faith walking self. Believing that he will do it. Now, this is the thing. He never told us when, but he told us he would. Y'all missed that. He, he never told us when, but he told us he would. So today, we want to push God a little. Can we push him? Can y'all help us push God? Can y'all... Can y'all help us push God? Woo! So we're going to ask this question. We're going to say, Lord, <laughs> do it for me. Well, actually, it's a statement, isn't it? <laughs> Lord, do it for me. Now, I want to tell him this. Lord, if you don't do it. Yes, Lord. It just won't be done. Oh, Lord. Do it for me. Anybody feel like that? I, Lord. Fix it for me. Yes, Lord. Lord, 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 I need you. Uh, to fix it for me. This is what I found out. Lord, I have a problem that only you can solve. So, Lord, 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 do it for me. Come on. I think I got a witness here.
one of those old songs and grab hold to it and that was it some folks would rather y'all might not know this have houses <laughs> houses and lands whoa some folks this is what they do choose silver uh, uh, silver and gold yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, but these things that they treasure and forget about the soul, I decided to make Jesus my choice. Now listen. The hymn writer went on to say, the road gets rough and the going gets tough and the heels are hard to climb. Come on, shout, but I started out. Well, I started out. Yeah. How long? A long time ago. A long time ago. There is no doubt. Because if you choose God over everything else, God 
will work in your favor. If I have any faith, walk in favor, believing people in here, make some noise for your God. Hallelujah. Why are you praising him? 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 Thank God that God left us with a pastor who believed in the same God we believe in. He's a faith walking pastor. Give it up for Pastor LJ and Lady Keisha as they come. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father. Lord, I got a problem that only you can solve. We asking that you do as only you can do, God. My mama can't do it. My daddy can't do it. My boss can't get it done. My money can't get it done. I need you to do it, God. Do it for us today, Father. We want you to do it today, God. We don't want to wait till next week, next month. We want you, we want to go home knowing that it's done, Father. Come on and just cry out to God that what you want him to do. Let's go into a moment of worship, y'all. Y'all just worship God. Petition God for what it is you were having to do. I don't know what it is, but you know God knows. You've been praying, you've been asking, you've been fasting. We just came out of Calibrate. You've been praying and fasting. Please do it for us, God. We know that you've done it before, so you'll do it again. Do it for us on this morning, God. Heal our minds. Give us peace. Give us joy. Let us know it's going to be all right. Remind us that you're going to be with us always. Remind us that you never left us nor forsake us. Do it for us on today, God. Do it for me, God. Don't just do it for me. Do it for my neighbor. Do it for the person on my right and on my left. We ain't going to be selfish this morning. We're not going to be greedy, but do it for my neighbor, Father. for us, God. Do it. If you don't know anything else to say, just say do it, God. Just do it, Father. 
just do it, Father. What I've learned is, as I'm not a man of many words myself, but I know that he knows what I need, what I want, whether I can articulate it or not. If I just talk, call on Jesus, he knows my situation. He knows what I need. He, just do it, God. Do it for us this morning, God. Do it for us this morning. Do it, God. Do it, God. Come on, right now, it's just you and God. Don't worry about nobody else in the room. It's just you and God. Just close your eyes. It's just you and God. Just talk with him. Let him talk to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to see another day. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping our children. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for doing it for us, Father. Hallelujah, God.
such an anointing that rests on our bishop and our elder, God. We thank you for everybody that's connected to the mount, and we believe in this year of release that you're going to release some things that the enemy going to be scared of. So you better tell them to watch out, because what I got coming is on the way. And I'm not going to be afraid to walk in this season. I know that the enemy is going to come, and he's going to tell you that you're not going to make it. He's going to tell you that this is going to be your last day. He's going to tell you that you just gave your last and God will never provide again. But you know what? The devil is a liar. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But our God comes to do the impossible. So possible is our portion. We come serving an eviction notice to lack this morning. An eviction notice that tells you that you wouldn't have anything. An eviction notice that you are called and equipped. God, we thank you right now that you are doing something so great and mighty and that your spirit rests in this place. So for every single person at the altar, we say, Lord, do it. And in the name of Jesus, I pray, so it is and so shall it be. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. As you go back to your seat, go back to your seat just saying, he's going to do it. Just go back to your seat saying, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Give God praise one more time. God is so good, y'all. God is so good. And we can go home today knowing that he is, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's did it before. He will do it again. Well, good morning, good morning. You can praise God right there. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to our online partners streaming from around the world, wherever you may be streaming from. I hope y'all are in the presence of God as well at the kitchen table or riding in the car, wherever you may be. Good morning to you all. Good morning to everyone who's in the room. We're excited to be here one more time. Y'all excited to be in the presence of God this morning? We super excited to be here on this morning. Wait, look, it's giving time. It's giving time. It is giving time. Absolutely. It's given time. I say it every week. We only have the resources that we have because of the goodness and the grace of our Lord and Savior. So let's continue to be great stewards of those resources so we can all continue to help push forward the kingdom of God. So you please um, make yourselves available to the text to give number that I'm sure they're going to put on the screen or you can give via our website www.themountleads.org or if you have physical money you can come and place them here um, in the black canisters that we have here on this stage. Did y'all have a great time last week on Resurrection Sunday? Did we have a time in here last week for Resurrection Sunday? We had an amazing time. Bishop and Elder was in the house. Can y'all do me a favor and make some noise and praise God for Bishop and Elder? We thank y'all. 
for all y'all do for us here at the fellowship. We had an amazing and amazing time last week uh, for Resurrection Sunday. And listen, y'all know last week was Supernatural Day, uh, Supernatural Day of Giving, so y'all know we are on our way to that million dollars that we set to go. We are on our way, y'all. We are on our way. They're still counting. We are on the way. And listen, I know that Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, fell on Fifth Sunday, so it kind of threw us off a little bit on the, you know, on our schedule and things of that nature. And people have still um, been given. We know that people, obviously, we know we had a great celebration weekend for Bishop with his retirement and things of that nature. So people have continued, um, been continuing to give, and so we're gonna allow everyone to continue to give throughout um, the rest of the month of April. Um, so if you so um, choose or. God leads you, you can still continue to give um, su for Supernatural Day of Giving. And then uh, we got a few things. What you got? I, I know. I was just going to jump in and tell, and, and I, I saw um, on Twitter this morning that somebody said, you know, I'm glad you said what you said at 8 o'clock, Dr. Keisha, because um, after I sold my seat last Sunday, I'm telling y'all, the enemy just, he just came after me. He told me, won't nobody come to church next Sunday, and, you know, the seats was going to be empty, and how you going to do this, and that's just how the enemy works sometimes. He literally comes to tell you that you're not worth it, that, that nothing ever else good can happen in your life. And so all week, Pastor will tell you that I was just in a moat. I could not get myself out of my moat. And so I had to talk to Pastor and Dr. Chan and some other wise counsel this week just to help, just to remind me that God is still going to do something great and mighty. And so if, if that was you this week where the enemy came after you, after you gave your seed and then your car broke down and you're like, Lord, I would have had the money if I wouldn't have gave it to the church. <laughs> if that was your testimony this week, then you got to still know that God is a provider and nothing that you do for him will he not return it to you. And so that was, that was definitely my wrestle this week. I'm glad I'm out of my rut. I'm, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost this morning. I'm out of my rut. But I tell you, that thing was tough this week. So thank God for passing. I'm just excited about what God is going to do. We own our way to one million. And um, th that's it. And Dr. Chan told us this week, he said, y'all looking at the bishop, and the bishop and elder have been there for 33 years. Y'all have been there for four weeks. What are you crying about? Get yourself together. Get yourself together. <laughs> Yeah, so we had an amazing time last week. We got some upcoming things. How many of y'all know my birthday weekend coming up, y'all? My birthday weekend coming up. And so we got an amazing weekend planned for that weekend. Of course, on April the 19th um, is the installation service where we will be installed here at the Mount at Chesapeake. So April 19th is the installation service at 7 p.m. That's a Friday night. And then that Saturday, April 20th, we will be having our comedy explosion. We're going to be having a comedy explosion. That'll be right here at 7 p.m. And you can scan the QR code uh, for tickets. Tickets are only $10. Tickets are only $10. We got comedians coming from all the way from California, y'all. Comedian by the name of Ron G will be here. Um, I think another young lady um, will be here as well. Of course, we're going to have um, Patrick hosting. So y'all don't want to miss that. Again, you can scan the QR code for your tickets, um, and they are only $10. So that is April the 20th, Saturday night. And then my birthday, April the 21st, on that Sunday, we are going to be celebrating with a bang at both 8 and 10 o'clock. I told them at 8 o'clock, you do not want to miss service on April 21st. Okay? Uh, I'm telling y'all, like I told them, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those days that you're not going to want to miss. I know we like to, you know, nowadays you stream and that sort of thing, so we kind of pick and choose which Sundays we're going to come in the building and which Sundays we're going to stream. April 21st is not a Sunday you're going to want to stream. All right, and don't say I didn't tell y'all. Y'all being real, like, okay, Pastor, whatever you say, I'm telling you right now, don't say that I didn't tell y'all. You want to be in the building on April 21st for either the 8 or the 10 o'clock service. Also, I want to shout out Man Cave Mondays. Man Cave Mondays um, takes place every second and fourth Monday, so please um, make yourselves available um, me and to Man Cave Monday. It's a great time. Um, we have great conversation, great food, fellowship, and things of that nature, so please make yourselves available to Man Cave Monday. Also, how many of y'all know that Mount Chesapeake has an app? 
We got an app. Yeah, we got an app. We had an app previously. For those of y'all who think you previously had the app, we did have a global app at one time, but we made some renovations to the app. We have a Mount Chesapeake app. So if you want to, you can take your phones out now, go to the app store. You definitely want to download the app. The app is where you're going to get all your information. The app got so many new features. We can text you with the app. We can email you because a lot of times people say that they're not getting all the information and stuff when we be emailing and all that. So now we have had the capability of sending a text. Everybody do text messaging. So now we have the ability to text you. You can register for events via the app. You can look, figure out any information you want to know in the life of the church based upon the Mount app. So you want to do yourself a favor right now and go to the app store and download um, the Mount app and put in all your information so that we will be able to um, stay in constant contact and connection with you and you will be able to stay abreast of everything that's taking place in the life of the church. Also, on April the 27th, we will be having a women's self-defense moment, boxing blast with technique and conditioning. So if we got any ladies out here that want to make sure, you know, you know what to do if anybody roll up on you the wrong way, if anybody pull up on you, okay, I see you back there. If anybody pulling up on you the wrong way when you walking out of Target or because you know y'all love Target. Y'all know, y'all love Target, boy. Every time I go to Target, I see at least five of y'all. <laughs> at least five of y'all. So anytime you're walking out of Target, you want to make sure you're ready for anything. Make sure you sign up for um, our women's self-defense class it's taking place on April 27th. And you can register for that via the app. If you have the app, you can register for that via the app. Um, the time will be at 9 a.m. on April 27th, and there is a cost of only $10, y'all, and it's going to take place at the Signet Gym down the street. I, I need to sign up for that class because I, I always say that if they come in my house, I am not a, a Glock person. For all the ladies, I give it up to y'all that can carry y'all Glock uh -huh. and be confident. But if they come in my house, I tell pastor all the time, they just going to get me. They going to get me. Because I just, I'm scared. I'll be the person that shoot myself in the foot accidentally. Like, I'm that person. So well, I don't I'm think they, the I, I, don't, I don't think they shooting, baby. I, don't. I know. I'm saying I'm going to take the self-defense class so that I know what to do. So you can use your hands. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. I might need it against them or you. Okay. I don't know. Well, <laughs> Keisha can't take the class. Keisha can't take the class. Look, I don't need you to know how to shoot or use your hands. If somebody come in there, just grab something, knock them side of the head. That's all I need. While I'm, while I'm doing what I'm doing, you just sneak up behind them and <laughs> knock them side of the head. But anyway, make yourselves available April 27th to the women's self-defense class. Also, April 28th. Somebody say, we busy, y'all. We busy. We busy. April 28th, we have our biker blessing. That Sunday, we will have our biker blessing where we will bless all the riders, all the motorcycle riders, all the uh, spider riders, or whatever it is you have. We will be blessing all riders on April 28th, immediately after the 10 a.m. service. So it'll be right here in the church parking lot immediately after the 10 a.m. service on April the 28th. How many of y'all got a, uh, open door testimonies? How many of y'all been, God been making, making, making things happen for you since we walked through the those doors. Okay, we've been getting, we've been getting all the testimonies and people have been talking about the things that God has been doing um, since they walked through the doors. And so if you would like to share some of your open door testimonies, you can do so by emailing testimony. This is testimony. That got to be a typo. Yeah, see that right there? Say testimony. Yeah. Email testimony at themountleads.org. Okay, they got it right up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, email testimony at themountleads.org, and you can share your open-door testimony. And please, don't, don't be shy about doing that. We'd like to hear. We would love to hear the testimonies that God is doing um, in the life of the church, and we would like to hear. Because sometimes, you know, it's good to hear what, what's going on even in the life of your neighbor, even if it hasn't happened for you yet. Um, so please, 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 y'all, share your open-door testimonies to testimony at themountleads.org. We got anything else? Is Dr. Harding here? Did she come to 10 o'clock? Our new doctor, Dr. Harding. You here? Stand up, girl, so we can see you. The doctor. Yes, let's celebrate with her. She just obtained her doctorate degree. She did her dissertation. Come on. You celebrate with others what God will do for you. We are
are so proud of you, girl. I said yes. this morning at 8 o'clock, you is smart, you is kind, <laughs> you is important. <laughs> You go, girl. Listen, I always celebrate another sister, especially yes. another sister who is doing great things. You yes. know, welcome to the 2% yes. of them that said you'll never be able to accomplish something of that magnitude. So you go, girl. You keep on keeping on. Yeah. Because there are great things in store for you. You don't back down, girl. So that's awesome. We celebrate you. Um, I also wanted to just say thank you from this morning to... Um, Anybody that did anything for Resurrection Sunday, so parking lot, doorkeepers, production, Creative prayer art, warrior, sound and media, absolutely. everybody. We are just so grateful for how you served, um, and just for being such amazing people. Y'all really are only at the Mount folk, and we thank God for that. Um, this morning, the kids went with uh, Brother Patrick to down down to Signet, I think, for the Black History Moment, and I had to pull an old school, KJ didn't want to go, y'all. He was like, I don't want to go to class. I don't want to go. Where you going today? <laughs> Tell me, I'm hungry. It's food back there. If you hungry, you'll eat what's back there. I want to go to McDonald's. Well, you ain't hungry then. So I had to pull an old school, but you know, well, that's our little personal business. But I just want to let y'all know that um, I'm a mama, and I'm going to be mama, and I ain't going to be no pushover. And so our kids are supposed to do what they're supposed to do, whether they like it or not. Somebody got to have some order. Somebody got to follow the rules. So praise God for that. But I do want to celebrate KJ really quickly. Yeah, I see all, all the real mamas was like, yeah, That's yeah, uh-huh. I saw y'all. Uh-huh. Get them. That's right. I, I agree. Come on now. I agree. All right. But I do want to celebrate KJ real quickly. Y'all watch this video from yesterday. He had a, a football game. Y'all watch this video. Yeah! So he scored the game winning touchdown. We are so proud of him. Coach Marino is here on security. Just like his daddy. Oh my gosh. I just told y'all last week that I was athlete of the year, eighth grade, and now just like his just daddy. Just like his daddy, boy. I tell you, boy. I saw that hazard he put on that boy. <laughs> Whew, I'm gonna let you have it. I'm gonna let you have it. But we know that he really gets his athleticism from his mother. But we gonna let you have it. We gonna let you have it. Go oh, ahead, yeah, Pastor. All right. But anyway, um, Coach Marino, we thank you. Coach Marino is such um, a mentor. At? And is Coach Marino here? He's usually here. Okay. Um, they have just taken KJ under their wing and just really mentored them. So we thank you, Coach Marino, for all that you are and blessing yes. to the kids. Um, this month is Autism Awareness Month. And I just want to shout that out because there are um, parents who are children, um, who have children that have autism. And I have literally seen doctors declare kids to be autistic. And then in two years, they have been fully talking and um, just surprising doctors. And so we know that it's no surprise to God what he can do. Uh, but I just wanted to share that, that we stand with you, um, you know, just as, as a part of Autism Awareness Month. Medicine in any capacity is always dear to my heart. So we know, know that we are holding your arms. We can be a resource for you if we can. Um, and so I wanted to share that. And then I wanted to also say thank you to all of those who served um, Sister Andy yesterday and her family. Her home going was here at the Mount Chesapeake. So thank you to anybody that had anything to do with that. Um, and I think that's all I had, Pastor. That's it. All right. Y'all ready for the word? All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. You know what? I want to thank God for you because you, you look good today, girl. They got that. Got the blazer on. Yeah, y'all ain't got to clap for it. That's fine. Just yeah. wait till after church. Wait till yeah, after I church. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 9. <laughs> chapter 9, verses 19 through 23. I'm going to read first in the New Living Translation. Then I want us to check it out in the message translation as well. But 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 23, it reads, Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, 
I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share in their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Now let's look at it in the message translation. Same scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 and 23. And it reads, even though, I am a f even though I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily become a servant to any and all in order to reach a wide range of people, religious, non-religious, meticulous moralists, loose living moralists, immoralists, the defeated, the demoralized, whoever. Somebody say everybody. I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. I've become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. I did all this because of the message. I didn't just want to talk about it, I wanted to be in on it. You may be seated. You may be seated. Y'all know we starting a new, a new series this month entitled Kingdom Code Switching. Entitled Kingdom Code Switching. And so the title for the lesson that Dr. Keisha and I would like to have with you all on today is entitled, I Do It For The Sake Not To Be Fake. I do it for the sake not to be fake. How many of y'all familiar with code switching? Okay, few of y'all, few of y'all familiar with code switching. What does it mean to code switch? Code switch means to alternate between two or more languages or varieties of language in conversation. It says, as with any social behavior, we pick up linguistic norms and learn to code switch according to context. So the example they use, how, how you say it? I, I said it wrong this morning. A Spanish and English speaker said. Pero why do I have to go to So that's pedo. Pedo. P-E-R-O. P -E -R -O. Yeah, we have our Spanish it's speaker pedo. here. It's pedo, right? Pe pero. Pero. There we go. You had to roll why do roll I have to go to a la casa? Working on my Spanish. <laughs> or, but why do I have to go home? Right? Then it says, a, English, a speaker of black vernacular. Now, I had to wonder. I said, what is Google talking about black vernacular? I guess that's slang or, or ebonics. A speaker of black vernacular English would say, we finna get to school on time today. Right. Y'all know how, you know, man, I'm, finna, I'm finna go to the store right quick. Yeah. Or, or, or as, as opposed to saying, we are going to get to school on time today. So you are code switching based upon where you are or who you with. Yeah. You can also code switch. How many of y'all know you can code switch in your appearance? Yeah, you can code switch in your appearance. You can code switch through uh, gestures or body language. You can co code switch with your clothing and other forms of nonverbal communication. So I told him this morning, because I, I was wondering myself, how do you code switch, you know, in, in nonverbal? So code switching would be, you know, if you're just walking with your fellas and y'all chilling, you just, you kind of just walk. You know how you walk. You, you pimp, you might be have a little limp with you. You know, you're just walking. And then, you know, when you get to work, you... You take your pimp out, you know, when you get to work, you take the, you take the pimp out of your leg. Or you walking with your girl, you know, you just chilling. You know how you put your arm around your girl. And then when you might get to the gala or to the meeting, then you, you know, you switch it up. 
You walk with your back straight, <laughs> head up high. Normally, you know, you're chilling, you, you, you relax a little bit. So you can code switch in your, in, in, in your body language as well. And, and we all know, we all know that you can tell who your mama, your daddy, or your grandma, you know you can tell who they're talking to on the phone by how they choose to communicate. Right. Because y'all know if they on the phone, they say, girl, girl, I know that's right. No, she talking to her home girl. She talking to her homegirl. But then if they get on the phone and say, <clears throat> yes, this is him, uh, who's speaking? <laughs> now, I know right then, I may not know who that is, but I know that ain't your homegirl no more. Because when, home, when your homeboy call your phone and, and his name come up on the phone, you be like, yo, what, what's good, bro? But when your boss call, when your boss call and that, you see that, that, that name come up on that phone, what you do? Y'all be quiet. Cut that TV down. Cut that TV down. <clears throat> <clears throat> hey, Bob, how are you? Doing fine. Good evening. Not a problem at all. Just sitting here, catching a breather. <laughs> you know, you, you know you do it. You know you do it. We all, we all code switch. We all code switch. But the crazy thing is, knowing that we all know how to code switch, why is it that believers in general have such a hard time kingdom code switching? We code switch everywhere else. No matter where we are, we know how to code switch. We know how to turn it on. We know how to turn it off. Chief just showed me something in the back. You be getting ready to get on that Zoom call. You ain't, you, that Zoom, when the Zoom call ain't started yet, you got the music playing, you having a good time, you bumping, you doing everything in the world. Soon as that, you know, whoever is the host of the Zoom call, you tighten up, put you, cut the music down. Because you, you code switching. We all know how to code switch, but why is it that we have such a hard time kingdom code switching? Right? We have such a hard time kingdom code switching. You know them people who just can't seem to turn off their churchy. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know them folk that just can't turn off their churchy. They just churchy all the time. You ever seen them folk? They just churchy all the time. It don't, know, it don't matter where they are. They blessed and highly favored. They just churchy all the time. They could be at the game. You see them at the game. Hey, what's going on, bro? How you doing? I'm, I'm good. I'm blessed and mm, highly favored. You like, bro, come on, I'm at, I'm at the game. I'm just, you know what I mean? I just got my nachos, my fries. They, they just can't seem to turn. They churchy off. Now, some of y'all are looking at me like, what's wrong with that? i tell you what's wrong with it because when, when you're talking to certain business people, if you ever find yourself talking to uh, maybe an elected official or talking to people of other cultures or even dealing with, um, you know, the young people or the next generation, they may not be into all that God is good. All the time, and all the time, God is good. See how y'all know that? Churchy. How many of y'all saw the, the Breakfast Club clip with Candace Owens up there? Okay, some of y'all, it's okay to let, I mean, it's okay to watch the Breakfast Club. Some of y'all like, no, I watched it too. I watched the Breakfast Club too. But I, I was watching, and, and just hilarious, she asked Candace Owens, she said, Candace, she said, finish this. She said, God is good. And Cannon said, God is good, amen. <laughs> and they like, come on, Candace, like, what you doing? So then she asked Charlemagne, she said, Charlemagne, God is good. Charlemagne did like y'all do all the time. And all the time, God is good. And Candace Owens is looking like, when in, in the world is all that? And they saying, like, Candace, like, where you been? Like, you, are you cultured at all? Everybody knows God is good all the time. All the time is God is good. But here's the thing, everybody not on that same type of vibe. They might not be into all that God is good all the time. And even if they are, they understand that right now might not be the time for that. Right now, we're just talking about business. And all you know how to do is talk church. You know them people that don't know how to do nothing but talk churchy. And then I'm going to let y'all in on a secret. I'm going to tell y'all why this is true. I'm going to tell y'all how you know this is true. The reason why y'all, the mount has done so well, and the reason why Bishop did so well is because Bishop is one of the best people at code switching. Yeah. 
If you ever spent any, any amount of time around Bishop, you will understand that he is one of the best people at Kingdom Code Switching. You get Bishop at church, you get him in a room full of preachers, boy, Bishop know how to cut that preacher talk on. He know how to talk, he know how to talk that preacher talk. It's dark this, it's dark that, you know, he know all the who was at this church at this time, he know all the different denominations and the backgrounds and the this and the that. He can go all day long on the preacher talk, but if you take him out of the preacher room and you put him in a room full of politicians, he know how to turn the preacher's voice off. He know how to turn the preacher's voice off, and he'll turn on his community leader voice. And then he talking about e economics and, and government and things of that nature. And then if you take him out of the room with the politicians and you put him in a room full of businessmen and businesswomen, he'll turn off the community leader voice and cut on his businessman voice. And he's talking professionalism and, and, and business, and he's, he's speaking about return on investments and things of that nature. Bishop is one of the best at kingdom code switching. He know how to turn it on based upon his context. Y'all know some people, you know, even some preachers, you know, Pastor Furby, they got there even on a voicemail, on a personal phone is, you know, you reached uh, <laughs> Bishop such and such. You got to know how to kingdom code switch. Paul says, when I'm with the Gentiles, I do like the Gentiles. But when I come over here with the Jews, I do what the Jews was doing. Right. I can't be like the Gentiles. And he says, I do, I do all of this because of the message. He does it to win souls to Christ. Hence our title for the day, which is, I do it for the sake. What does sake mean? Sake is for the purpose of or the interest of in order to achieve or preserve. So we, y'all, as believers, we code switch for the sake of winning souls. That's, honey, what Paul was doing. Paul was a kingdom code switcher, right? And so, so when we're kingdom code switching, number one, to win, to, when we're kingdom code switching to win souls for Christ, we are point number one, putting ourselves in other shoes. When we are kingdom code switching, the first thing we're doing are, is putting ourselves into others' shoes. The scripture said, Paul said in the scripture, but I entered their world yeah. Yeah. and tried to experience things from their point of view. He says, I entered their world. Listen, y'all, as we, as we just trying to disciple, you know, we're trying to get younger, we're trying to reach this next generation, how are we going to understand someone or disciple someone if we haven't taken the time to walk in their shoes? Right? If you haven't traveled in their path, if you haven't faced their grief, right? Even the Bible says that Jesus was acquainted with our grief. Jesus was acquainted with our grief, and he didn't fall to temptation, but he knew what temptation was. He knew the temptation that we would have to face, right? So in order to lead people and understand people, you kind of got to be of the people. Jesus was of the people. He made himself acquainted with our grief. He made himself know and understand what kind of temptation we were all going to have to be of. Paul, in this text, made himself of the Gentiles. He made himself of the Jews. He made himself of the weak. You have to know how it is to walk in others' shoes. And not only do you have to walk in their shoes, but they need to see you walk in their shoes. Right? It's not good enough just to walk, but you need to let them see you walk in their shoes. They need to see that you're at least trying to get an understanding of where they come from. Right? And, and when you put yourself in the shoes of someone else and get a sense of their situation and get a sense or a taste of what they've gone through or get a, a clear understanding of what they're dealing with, it makes it easier for you to understand the way they think. If you put yourself in someone else's shoes, it makes it easier for you to understand the way they think. It makes it easier for you to understand why they see the world the way they do. Right. And once we as believers gain a good sense of their situation, once we get a taste of what they've gone through, once we get a clear understanding of what they're dealing with, then, y'all, it helps us to relate to them in a way that will help us help them gain a relationship with God because we will know what it is to walk in their shoes. Right, right. 
See, most of the time, we simply try to introduce people to Christ just by quoting Scripture. We think that's enough. We just quote the scripture, and then they're supposed to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. When we really should be taking the time to put ourselves in their shoes, we should be taking the time, as Paul said, to enter into their world. And then, y'all, they will see that somebody else cares enough about them that will make them want to accept Jesus. Right? As opposed to them feeling like, here goes somebody else just trying to kick some scripture to me to get me in church. Right? Paul said, I entered into their world. He didn't just get up to them and just start quoting scripture. He didn't go over there with the Gentiles or the Jews and start quoting them what the law said that he was under. He said, no, when I was over there with the Gentiles, I lived under the Gentile law. Although he knew he did not have to abide by that law, he knew he was under God's law. Paul was a kingdom code switcher. That is so good. And, and it makes me think about, yeah, we can clap there. That was good. That was really good. So, this, this conversation came about when um, Pastor and I were talking to KJ because, you know, in middle school now you have all these changes and you're faced with all these influences and everybody's trying to tell you which way to go. And so one day KJ got in trouble and, and, and he came home. We had a conversation with him and we had to say to him, look, son, you got to be able to code switch because there is a time and a place for everything. Sometimes it's time to play and goof off. Sometimes it's time to sit down, listen to your teacher, and don't have nothing to say back. And scripture says the same thing. It's the time to be quiet. It's the time to speak. It's the time to plant. It's the time to harvest. It's the time to kill. And it's the time to heal. This is what the scripture says. It's the time to be born and it's the time to die. It's the time to mourn and it's the time to laugh. There is a time and place for everything. And so when we're code switching, we got to be able to understand the timing and the importance of code switching. But as we're talking about this, this first point and walking in other people's shoes, I want to drive home the point that be for others what you wish that they would be for you. And, and that's important, right? Because not, not only do you need to be for others what you wish that they would be for you, but be for others what God has been to you. And so when I think about being for others, what God has been to me, I think about, you know, the fact that I've seen, last year I saw 7,000 patients alone. I saw 7,000 people. I averaged to see between 700 and 1,000 patients a month at my practice. And so, you know, when I'm, it, when I'm at work, I speak English, I speak Ebonics, I speak Japanese, I speak Jesus, I speak whatever I need to speak in order to get my patient what they need to get. And so it makes me think about when I'm in the office, you know, if I come in and I see a child and I got this, I, I should put this on you, Pastor. But if I put this, if, if I put this on my head and I come in to see one of my pediatric patients, they gonna be scared. They gonna be like, girl, what is that? Who are you? Get away from me. I don't want you to swap me for strep, COVID, RSV, don't touch me, okay? But if I come in and I got this on my head, cold switch, immediately I get a different response from my patient. They're like, wow, oh, you're nice. You're a pretty doctor. You look like Santa. Okay, maybe you can swap me. But code switching, if we don't understand the importance of when it's time to wear the hat, then we lose people. The problem is we try to meet folk in the club with our sister Sally hat on. And they like, girl, get away from me. Who are you? I don't care about nothing you trying to say. God is good, girl. I got a drink and a buzz. Leave me alone. Okay? Who is sister Sally and why are you talking to me? Go away. Okay, we trying to wear his hat to the club, and she like, chill, I got things to do, and church is not one of them right now, okay? I'm trying to twerk, drop it, and, and turn around and hop it at the same time. But we don't know how to code switch, and the important part about that is you have to understand the timing of when to speak the language. If I wear this hat, and I'm in a different culture, I immediately identify that I'm adapting to your culture. So they call me Sue Young. Yes, Sue Young. How may I help you? 15 minutes? Okay. Chinese food be ready. 15 minutes. K-bye. 
they immediately understand that I'm adapting to the culture. But if we can't meet people where, where they are, then how can we ever win them to Jesus Christ? Okay, so, you know, we come up here and we, we talking to folk and we saying I'm, 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 I'm blessed and highly favored and he just fin finished getting high. I don't care about being blessed and highly favored. Help me get to rehab, okay? Buy me a meal. Give me something, some direction that would help me save my life right now. I don't need you to give me scripture. I need you to help me in my time of need. I need you to speak my language. I have seen people come in shackled and I gotta give them a pelvic exam. And I'm gonna say, girl, I know you locked up right now, but greater is he that is in you. And I'm going to say it in a way that they understand that, girl, God's not done with you yet. You made a bad mistake, but you ain't, you ain't crucified forever. You ain't going to be in this place forever. You'll come out of this thing. This is only your temporary season, but you will come out of this. Just because they said that you live here don't mean that that's your final resting place. I don't live here. This is just a stopping point. I made a bad decision. I got caught up, but God's going to deliver me and help me to understand that this is not the end for me. That's, that's how I need you to speak to me when we cold switching. So yeah, I can tell y'all greater is he, but I need her to understand that you made a bad mistake, but this ain't it, and it ain't over. And you gotta keep going, and you gotta clean yourself up, and you gotta get yourself together so that you can come out on the other side. That's what cold switching is, and I don't ever get so high and mighty that when I wear that white coat that I don't forget what Paul said, that you are supposed to serve all people. It don't matter what they look like, no matter how they come in there, no matter how they want to be addressed, if you transgender or, or whatever, I'm going to treat you the way that God would have me to treat you because who I ain't the judge. I don't got a heaven or hell to put you in. All I can do is love you through it. And so that's the point of code switching and adapting to where we are and understanding that meet people where they are, walk in their shoes, have enough courage to walk in their shoes. If you want to maintain a friendship, be a friend. If you want to maintain relationship with your family, be family. If you want to keep a relationship, keep a relationship, but you got to do that with work and being the person that you are also asking the person to be. You got to be that person. I have seen my mother literally watch tons of people's kids for, with nothing in return, nothing in return. Elsa will tell you, she watches not only my kids, but she watches tons of people's kids with nothing in return. And you know what? She does it out of the kindness of her heart because she understands that if I can be this for you, then God can be what I need him to be. Yes. Paul says it at the end. He says, when we're doing this, I'm doing this to be all things to all people, but so that I may partake in his blessings. And so the beauty is I get to partake in the blessings when I become all things to all people so that I might save some. That's good. That's good. Can y'all praise God for that? <laughs> so when we are kingdom code switching, number one, we have to put ourselves in other shoes. But number two, we are changing our point of view. When we're kingdom code switching, we are changing uh, POV. It says, but I entered their world, and right here it says, and tried to experience things from their point of view. So as believers, we have to be able to see things in ways other than our own ways, right? If we're going to be valuable to the kingdom, we have to be open to seeing things from another perspective and not just pushing or wanting to push and ram our perspectives down other people's throat. I'm going to say that again. If we want to be valuable to the kingdom, we have to be open to seeing things from another perspective and not only wanting to push our perspectives onto other people. People who, people who understand things the best are people who are able to see all perspectives and not be blinded and stuck in their own perspectives. Okay. Paul said, but I entered their world and try to experience things from their point of view. And what I realize is the more perspective you have, the better you can communicate your ultimate goal. Right. 
And that's true because once we've seen someone else's point of view, we can articulate what we need to get across, but from a place of their understanding, Brother Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's, 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 almost like, it's almost like infiltrating. Right? Now that I have some inside information on you, now that I know how you think, I can get my point across better based upon your way of thinking. If I spend a little time with you, I know how you think, I know your patterns, I know why your mind is shaped this way, I know how you see the world. Now I can better shape and get the point across that I need to get across to you because I understand the way you think. I've changed my point of view. We, we have to look at it like being a kingdom spy. Yeah. We, we're kingdom spies. We, we, are, we are undercover for God. Yeah. Right, God got us undercover. So, so it's like, you know, we could be hanging and, and, and kicking it with you and all that, but the whole time I'm hanging with you, the whole time we kicking it and vibing, I'm actually learning. I'm, I'm collecting data and I'm becoming more understanding. And, and then while I'm doing that, while we hanging and kicking and while I'm learning about you and, and collecting this data, and what, what, I, what I'm gonna do is, at the same time, I slide in some knowledge on you. Right? So we hanging and we kicking it. And while we hanging and kicking it, I'm like, hey, yo, bro, we, we might be out at the spot, out at the club, out at the wherever we at hanging out. And, you know, I got a second to talk to you. And I'm going to say, hey, bro, man, man, you ever think about just spending more time at home? You ever, spend, you ever think about chilling at the crib a little bit more? This party really ain't even all that for real. It ain't even really that lit. You know how sometimes you get to the party, it ain't even lit like how you thought it was. Man, I could have stayed home. Yeah. That's your opportunity right there, bro. We could have stayed home. Man, you know your kids, man, they love their daddy, man. Every time I see y'all, man, they all over you, man. And then what happens is, what happens is, before you know it, the next time y'all hanging and kicking it and all that, they start asking you, hey, man, what was that you was, what was, that you was talking about the other day? They, they going to end up wanting to know more and learn more about what you was talking simply because you changed your point of view and was able to see things from their point of view. It's like when Bishop always say, I got to give you a little orange juice with the castor oil. He's just trying to, he's just trying to ease it in. That's how we got to do it. You, you can't just be around just quoting scripture. The Bible said this. First Corinthians said this. No, just hang and kick it. Change your point of view. Make yourself enter into their world. And change your point of view on things. And while y'all chilling, that's your chance to slide in some positive information. That's your chance to slide in what the Bible say. That's your chance to slide in what Jesus say. Now, what you can't do, you don't slide in by saying, you know, 1 Corinthians 9 said. <laughs> no, nah, bro, we ain't trying. You, now you like the lady in the club. <laughs> we ain't trying to hear that, bro. We playing spades and dominoes right now. We, you know what I mean? We got a little bit of everything on. We ain't trying to hear what, what thus said the Lord in 1 Corinthians. But what you do is you just slide it in in y'all conversation. You got to know how to code switch, change up your language, and code switch and just kick it on some, you know what I mean, bro? You ought to try this, man. Maybe try this, man. You said you was dealing with that, man. Last time when I was dealing with something like that, let me tell you how God worked it out for me. And before you know it, the more you start hanging and kicking information like that, when y'all start hanging out, they're going to start asking you, hey, bro, what was that you was talking about God was saying last time? Right, right. All because you were able to see things from their point of view. Right. We're kingdom code switching. That, that is so good. And, and sticking on Sister Sally, she got a platform today. Um, Jesus is, is really everywhere. And I shared this example um, <laughs> I shared this example this morning that I went to Guava. So the 10 o'clock crowd, y'all might know Guava, First right? lady was at Guava. She was at Guava like this, too, y'all. See, 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 you ain't right. You ain't right. I can you, see her in there now. <laughs> you are not right. You are not right. At, at the 9 o'clock hour, I was like, all right, Sister Sally, I got to go. I'll see y'all later. It's 9 o'clock. Shift change. That's when the real folks start coming in. I was like, oh, yeah. I do not fit in here or be all things to all people. But at the same time, it said, I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ. But I did enter their world for a second. I did enter their world. You got and so, in and got out. Huh? You got in and got out. I got in and got out with the quickness. Okay. But I went to Guava, y'all, seriously. And Guava got some good food. That oxtail pizza is the bomb. They had a really good pasta that I had that night. So I went for a birthday dinner. And I was like, oh. Okay, like I'm in the streets. First ladies in the streets, okay? I am outside. 
that. Like, what? I could not believe it. Um, and so I went in for a birthday dinner, and then, you know, as I was there, um, I met um, the bartender, and the bartender came up to me, and she said, Dr. Keisha. And I was like, oh, gosh, who is this? Like, did I do something? Like, oh, I can tell I'm not where I'm supposed to be. She was like, Dr. Keisha, I just want to tell you that, do you remember? You put my birth control in my arm. You put the next one on in. I was like, oh, wow. And she was like, and I just want to tell you that you saved my life, because when you saw me, you ordered an ultrasound, and the ultrasound showed that I had a, a cancerous cyst on my ovary, and you saved my life. I said, well, Lord Jesus, I'm in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. At 9 o'clock, I cold switched and left, but I was in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. And so it was so crazy for, to me, but it was it was confirmation of this point that it's the point of view, right? You gotta be able to put yourself and meet people where they are. She felt comfortable enough to come up to me and tell me that her doctor had saved her life in the club, that I had saved her life. And I would have never imagined in a million years that I would have a former patient come up to me and tell me that you saved my life and that I still know God and that I still love God. And look, Dr. Keisha, look what he did for me through you. And I had the audacity to meet you in the club. I would have never heard that testimony if I didn't meet her where she was. If you don't meet people where, you, where they are, again, like Pastor said, I'm not saying I did not take on their way of life. At 9 o'clock, I was going home. But I kept my bearings in Christ. But I did. For a second, I entered their world, and I tried to experience things from their point of view. So I met her where she was so that she could tell me about the goodness of what God had did for her. And so it's a beautiful thing when you can actually meet people where they are. Scripture says the world would love you if you were one of his own, if you belong to it, but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world so it hates you. So yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable when you have to do things um, in life that, that say that I'm a believer of Jesus Christ. It's going to be uncomfortable. You, you're going to have to get rid of some people, places, and things. But it doesn't mean that you get so high and mighty that you can never go back and meet people where they are. I don't want to ever be so high and mighty that I own a business and I still can't serve people. I don't want to be ever so high and mighty that I got so much money that I can't help a family member. I don't want to be ever so high and mighty that I love the Lord so much that I still got the audacity to come in here and say, God, I thank you, and then I get to a place where I'm cussing you out. Where was Jesus where you were cussing me out? Where was he at? When did you, when did you bring his name up then when you decided to say every word in the book? I don't understand it. We got to be able to code switch in the right context. You can't code switch because you come in here, you want everybody to think you got it all together. And then at home, you code switching in a different language. If you're going to speak the language, then speak the language. But code switch in the appropriate way so that you still don't forsake the gospel and that you don't miss the fact that I still want to be in alignment with God's word. It's important here to see it from their point of view. Edward Murrow shared a quote, and it says, to be persuasive, we must be believable. To be believable, you must be credible. To be credible, you must be truthful. That means you gotta be truthful about where you are, and in order to be truthful, and in order to get that credibility, you gotta be able to say that, yeah, this is what God did for me, and this is how he can do the same thing for you, but you gotta speak to it in a season where people actually understand it. And if you speak in a language above them, then they ain't gonna ever get it. I can't get you in here on Sunday morning if I'm speaking a language that number one, I don't even feel like you living in the first place. And if you say this is where you go, but this is how you act at work, then keep me away from that church. I don't want anything to do with that either. If you say that you love God and this is how you treat folk, then I don't know. You say you at the mount. No, you don't belong to the mount. I'm gonna tell them you don't go here. I don't know her, she ain't on the roster. You got to make sure that you code switching in the appropriate context. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> so when we are code switching, number one, we are putting ourselves in other shoes. Number two, we are changing our point of view. And number three, lastly, we have to walk it like we talk it. 
We got to walk it like we talk it. Walk it like I talk it. Walk it like I talk it. Hey. hey. Walk it like, okay. Hey. All right, come back, come back, come back. Y'all get ready to code switch over there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Walk it. Walk it. Come on I know back. that song too. I'm hip a little bit. Okay. I'm hip a little all right, bit. All right, all right. So, so we got to walk it like we talk it. It says, I've become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. It said, I did all this because of the message. Then right here it says, I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. Yeah. I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted it to be in on it. Code switching, y'all, also, also shows that you are about what you talking. Code switching shows that you are about what you talking. Any, anybody knows when you going into any kind of partnership with somebody, you got to have some skin in the game too. You might not, you might be the money person, but then somebody else might got the talent, somebody else might got the skill set, somebody else, but we ain't just letting you in the partnership and you ain't bringing nothing to the table. You got to have some sort of skin in the game. If, if you're going to be rolling with me, I need to know, I need to know, I need to see you in action first before we start hanging out. I need to see that you then put in some work. I need to know that I can count on you. And the only way I can count on you is by seeing you in action. You know, it's like, right, we, you know, we got security and all that. I see Big Don right here, and y'all think that, you know, y'all think that security just, you know, just security, and they won't do nothing. No, we, I, I seen Big Don in action. I, I, I done seen him really had to put some hands on somebody. You know, if you're going to be walking with somebody, you need to know that, that, that they're going to do everything that they say they're going to do. I can't just rely on your lip service. Any, anybody can tell you that they with you. Anybody can tell you that they got your back. Yeah. Anybody can tell you that they love you. Yeah. But, but I don't want you to just talk about it. I want you to be about it. Yeah. Paul said, I didn't want to just talk about it. That's why I like Paul. Paul was a Paul stood on that business. Paul said, I ain't want to just talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. He wanted to be in on what the Gentiles were on. He wanted to be in on what the Jews were on. That's why he said when he was with the wheat, he became wheat. Right. He didn't want to just walk among the wheat and just be with the wheat. He said, no, nah, if y'all wheat, I want to be wheat as well. Because in order to lead people to Christ, he felt like, like I said earlier, you got to be of the people. He wanted to be in on it. Don't, don't just tell me how God going to bring me out. Don't just tell me how God going to make a way. Don't just tell me how God going to provide, but show me where you been low at too. Show, show me where you've been low at. Show me how he made a way for you before. Show me how he provided for you before. And then, not even just in the past tense, because y'all know at church, you know, we good for saying what God has done for us. You know, he done did this for me, and he did that for me. We good. To, we love talking about what he did in previous years and in past tense. But no, talk about what God has done for you right now. Yeah. Right? So be honest enough to show me where you at right now. Be honest enough to show me how you need him right now. Be honest enough to tell me what you're struggling with and dealing with right now. Yeah. Yeah. The next generation, they don't want to just hear a whole lot of talk about oh, what God can do and he can do this and he, but what, what, what you dealing with right now? How God helping you right now? Paul said when he was with the weak, he became weak. He didn't just tell them how God was going to pull them out. No, he showed them I'm weak too. And a lot of times in church, we don't like to share what we're going through and struggling. And I ain't saying that you got to sit here and put all your business on the street and tell everybody what you got going on, because I ain't going to tell y'all all my business neither. But whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever you can't share, and then some of the things I told them this morning, don't you, you ain't got to co-sign nothing. You know, sometimes sometime I, I, can, I can have a little, little, little attitude problem. Yeah, I can have a little, I can have a little, I can have a little attitude problem. Thank God for delivering. You know, people and things can rub me the wrong way. Mm. And she know it. She see mm. it coming. When it's coming up, she start pulling on my shirt. She tugging on me like, okay, chill. You got to be honest, man. You know what, man? I got a, I got an attitude problem sometimes, too. I got a problem with my patience sometimes, too. I procrastinate sometimes, too. 
They don't want to just hear you talking about what God going to do and what God can't do. Well, what are you dealing with? Tell them what you, and then sometimes with what they coming to you with, you got the same issue. Don't be afraid to go ahead and acknowledge, you know what? I deal with that same thing too. You help me and I help you. Let's go to counseling together. Paul said, I don't want to just talk about it. I want to be in on it. You got to walk it like you talk it. Go ahead, baby. That's so good. That's so good. Amen. Amen to that. Walk it like I talk it. Walk it like I talk. (laughs) Um, The question that I wanted to ask was, and this is this is a very thought-provoking question. Um, do you want to be well known or do you want to be worth knowing? And if you want to be well known, then everybody can know who you are and you can have all the fame and all the accolades. But to be worth knowing means that there's something in you, there's something about your character, there's something about you adopting. Um, the heart and the spirit of what other people are going through, that you can get in on their level and help them through whatever it is that they're going through. And when I want to be, when I say that I want to be worth knowing, I want to be remembered for the kind of person that I was. I want to be remembered for my caring heart. I want to be remembered that I was able to step up and help you when I didn't want to help myself. I want to be remembered for the fact that I'm still able to show up and take care of you, even though I got my own problems. I want to be remembered that I can speak to you in your your situation, knowing that I may not be having a good day, but that does not stop me from still showing up and being the best person that I can be be for you. You know what? Because when I get to work, they don't care about the fact that I got three kids and they acting bad. They just want to know, can you help me with my problem? They don't care about the fact that me and my husband may have just had a disagreement. They just want to know, can you write me a prescription so I can feel better? And so you got to be able to separate knowing that even though you may be going through a season, that you still being able to do it for the sake and not to be fake, that God's still going to show up for you. Paul literally said that, that I partook, I was a partaker because I wanted to do it for the sake of the message. I wanted to do it for the global, the global um, perspective. I wanted to do it for the greater good here so that ultimately I could partake in God's blessings. And I don't know about y'all, but I want to partake, partake in God's blessings in every capacity. I want them running over till I can't receive them no more. But in order to do that, I have to ingrain my Myself in the culture of being able to do that. So you know what? I expect it to work in my life because I'm not just being it, I'm doing it. I expect it to work in my life because I'm showing up for others, even sometimes when I don't feel like showing up. I expect it to work for me for the sake and not to be fake. I expect it to work because I literally am a living, breathing, walking, talking miracle. I expect it to work for me in this season because I'm going to be, like Paul said, and be all things to all people. And so we have to really take on the ownership of being that. I saw a quote the other day that said, Carrie Newoff said that the people who claim to have the greatest level of spiritual maturity but have the lowest level of self-awareness end up leading very unhealthy organizations. That means your organization is your home. If you claim to have the greatest level of spiritual maturity but you have the lowest level of self-awareness, then you are headed for destruction. Because I can get in here and be high and mighty and and high five you and the Lord is so good. But if I'm not self-aware of how I'm speaking to you on a level that you can understand it, then how can we ever win souls for Jesus Christ? And so I just want to make sure that we understand the importance of walking it like I talk it. Because again, for what will a man profit if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? So we just got to remember that on today. That's good. That's good. And listen, y'all, before we leave, just so we don't get it twisted, let's read it one more time, just so we don't get it twisted. Paul said, I did not take on their way of life. Right? He said, I did not take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ. But he did enter their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. 
He said, I've become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. I did all this because of the message. I did not just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. We do it, y'all, for the sake and not to be fake. Amen. We done. We done. We hope that we said something that you can take and apply to your life today. We don't like to, we don't like to give you something that you can't take and apply to your life until next week, next month, or in the by and by, as they say in the old school church. We like to give you something that you can take and apply to your life today. And so we hope that we were able to do that on this morning. But listen, before we leave, we can't let you get out of here without giving you an opportunity to make what we believe is the best decision that you could ever possibly make, which is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior dedicate your life to Christ or become a partner of this amazing church. And so if you're watching online and you would like to do either of those three things, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, rededicate your life to Christ, or become a partner of this amazing church, you can do so by texting TMC to the number 71441. But if you're here in the room and you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, rededicate your life to Christ, or become a partner of this amazing church, you can do so by stepping out into the aisle and joining us down here at the altar. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to put you on the spot, but we are going to praise God and celebrate you for embarking on this new journey. So if you hear here, now is your time. If you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, rededicate your life to Christ, or become a partner of this amazing church, you can make your way down here right now, and we're going to celebrate God for you at this time. This is your opportunity to walk in this favor, y'all. It's your opportunity to walk in this favor. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Now is your time. Now is your time. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to put you on the spot. But we're going to celebrate God for you on this morning. Come on, let's walk in this favor, y'all. Let's walk in this favor. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Now is your time. Now is your time. Now is your time. Now's your time, y'all. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church, y'all. Now's your time to walk in his favor. Come on, walk in his favor. I promise you, we're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to put you on the spot. I ain't going to put the microphone in your face and make you say nothing. Come on and walk in his favor, y'all. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Now's your time. Now's your opportunity. It's your opportunity to walk in his favor. Is anybody here today? You want to walk in his favor? Anybody want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. I'm walking in favor. I'm walking in favor. Come on, walking in favor, y'all. I'm walking in favor. I'm walking in favor. Come on, walking in favor. Come on, walking in favor, y'all. That's your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. You may have heard the word presented today in a way that you never heard it presented to you before. That might be your sign that you want to be a part of this fellowship. Come on, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Or if you need prayer or you would like to volunteer, come on, walk in this favor. Is anybody here today? Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Now's your time. If you online, you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, rededicate your life to Christ, or become a partner of this amazing church. Just text TMC to the number 71441. Is there anybody in the room? Don't miss the opportunity, y'all. I don't want you to miss the opportunity. 
Come on and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a partner of this amazing church. Come on, y'all be in prayer with me just for one. Come on, y'all pray for God just for one. Let's just get one. Let's just get one. Let's just get one. Come on, God. Come on, God. Don't let them go home. Don't let them go home. Can y'all praise God for a sister coming right here? Come on, y'all praise God for her. Now that we got it started, is there anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that want to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Rededicate your life to Christ. Become a part of this amazing church. Anybody else? Don't miss a moment, y'all. Don't go home missing it. Don't go home and miss it. Don't miss your opportunity to walk in his favor. Come on, y'all. Is there anybody else? Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rededicate your life to Christ. Come upon in this amazing church. Anybody? All right. All right. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. This is the only wise God I save. Can y'all praise God for another sister right here? Who was able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God I save. It be glory and majesty, dominion and power. I call us blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed when we come and blessed when we go. In Jesus' name, amen.